This is the Agribusiness Report. I'm Tony St. James, joined today by the Honorable G.T. Thompson. He represents the 15th Congressional District of Pennsylvania and is the ranking member of the House Ag Committee. And I also hear you are now uh, uh, a citizen. Is, is it a citizen of Lubbock, Texas? I am, I am now an honorary citizen of Lubbock, Texas, having uh, joined uh, Congressman Arrington and, and a number of my Texas colleagues as we gathered. Uh, and you were there, which was wonderful, uh, at Texas Tech on Friday. Uh, the, 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 when I was done with uh, my panel and presentations, the, uh, the mayor of Lubbock presented me a certificate making me an honorary citizen, and it came with a great cowboy hat to back it up. So I guess that's, uh, that, I don't need to carry the certificate, just wear the hat. Now, you also had the opportunity to see some of the production agriculture in the region. Uh, what was your takeaway from that? Yeah, uh, well, Tony, actually last week was uh, what I call a, a barn, barnstorming tour, and it really was. I started out with uh, Congresswoman Michelle Fishbach, great uh, new member on the House Agriculture Committee, and that was northern Minnesota. And we spent time meeting with uh, producers and processors, and uh, from there went to uh, Illinois. Uh, I was able to spend some time with Representative Mary Miller. Uh, from Illinois, and we uh, spent time with our the soybeans and corn, uh, pork, beef, uh, just uh, just great. And we finished the week in Lubbock, Texas, and uh, what a wonderful experience. I mean, the rural, uh, you know, the rural summit uh, that uh, Congressman uh, Arrington did was just well done, and and looking at all aspects of rural America, specific to his congressional district in West Texas. And, uh, you know, from agriculture to health care to infrastructure, just, just across the board. And did, then had a wonderful day on Friday. That was on Thursday. Wonderful day on Friday. It was a bit of a, almost a baton death march in 106 degrees uh, across West Texas, uh, where we uh, had a chance to visit uh, peanut growers and, and uh, a, uh, a shelling uh, uh, company. Um, uh, cotton fields and, and a cotton gin. Um, uh, spent uh, just a great visit in a uh, uh, feedlot. Uh, I've never seen so many future steaks in my entire life in one place. It was uh, it was pretty incredible. And then you know we we actually visited a, a family that's growing grapes and and developing um, uh, their own wine and have a winery. Uh, select Pride, uh, Select Dairy which is an amazing dairy operation in West Texas. Uh, you know, I, I was told that somebody infamous in the past, uh, early on, said that that part of the, the world would never be inhabited or nothing you could do there. Now, I'm paraphrasing, obviously. Uh, boy, were they wrong. Uh, the agriculture in West Texas is amazing. In all of my journeys, I, you know, I think it's incredibly important to do that, to get out, to be able to see agriculture of all commodities in all regions of the country and um, and it was it was an exhausting week but it was a blessing a true blessing and I and and the information I learned and the things that I saw was going to help me be able to do my my job better for for rural America and for the agriculture industry across the country and I just wonder if that is a good segue to a report that you released this morning, Economic Impacts of the Sensible Taxation and Equity Promotion Act. And there's more to the, the title of this, but the point is it's looking at some tax changes and how it would affect farmers and ranchers nationwide. What did you see? Well, uh, absolutely a great segue because it was Texas A&M that we reached out to and asked them to, to take a look at uh, essentially what is the Biden administration's proposals for increasing taxes around inheritance tax, capital gains, raising the basis. Um, and uh, so the, uh, um, the agriculture uh, food uh, uh, center uh, really led by Dr. Outlaw. Um, they've got a long history of doing great uh, economic analysis. Um, and they, they reached out, they used a tremendous, uh, uh, they did such a great job. They, they, they basically took uh, two 
two legislative proposals that really represent what President Biden wants to do with, with increasing tax hardships. Um, uh, and that, uh, the STEP Act, and then the other one, uh, which uh, is uh, the 90 half, 95 and a half percent act, I believe. Um, and, um, um, and they did the analysis on that. The Biden administration claims, as does the secretary, that this will have, uh, they'll have all kinds of carve outs and this isn't going to impact our farmers, our ranchers, our foresters in any way. And that's not what the study showed. The study showed that actually, the uh, um, the the average farm that uh, uh, ninety eight percent of all the farms that will be impacted and not to impact it in a little way it's a huge way one point four million dollars you know we're talking a margin that can really um, you know our our agriculture system has been kind of fragile especially com coming off of COVID in twenty twenty and we've had some difficult agriculture years, right? The past number of them. And to have that kind of a hardship placed, it really just impedes the, the future of agriculture. Uh, it will disrupt the, the food supply chain because it's going to make it impossible for, uh, for the next generation, those heirs, to be able to continue farming, you know, which really puts in jeopardy our food security and our rural economy. And so, uh, I mean, when it comes to the death of a generation, I mean, what, what part of the farm do you sell off in order to pay these taxes, which I consider to be double taxation anyways, because those assets, taxes have been paid on them for sometimes for generations. But what part can you sell off and still be a farm or a ranching or a forestry operation? I, I would argue nothing. And so uh, we... You know, we, we need to deal, and I've always said this, you know, we deal with science and facts. We should look at the data when it comes to making decisions. And uh, that's what we've done. I was uh, really honored to work with uh, Senator John Bozeman from, uh, from Arkansas. He was a, um, a Bible study buddy of mine when he was in the House. He was a mentor of mine early on and proud of the work that he's doing in the U.S. Senate today. But we, we did this together uh, in a bicameral way. Um, and the, the data uh, is, is very convincing that, that uh, the proposed tax increases, where the Democrats will say that it uh, will have no impact, uh, you know, their goal is to, to impact Wall Street. This is going to hurt Main Street and, quite frankly, all the farm lanes uh, in, in, in rural America. You talk about uh, the science, if you will, the, the data, and uh, that is what is being touted as the reason for an announcement from EPA yes. now to roll back the navigable waters protection or as we commonly refer to it, WOTUS. What's happening there? Yeah, that was an announcement on June 8th by the Army Corps of Engineers and the Environmental Protection Agency. Um, uh, just a, a terrible announcement. You know, I was proud. I actually, for once, I was proud to stand with the EPA uh, when President Trump's uh, navigable waters uh, initiative was uh, uh, was announced. Um, it was a common sense approach. It, it gave certainty to uh, um, you know uh, to you know making sure that navigable, non-navigable water sheds remain clean and and good drinking water and. Um, and it was what President Trump had accomplished was a pushback on WOTUS. And Waters of the U.S. Uh, was proposed under the Obama-Biden administration. That was, a, that was the largest, proposed largest private property taking in the history of our country. I mean, in, anywhere where water laid. And, you know, and where I'm from, you know, those low areas where after it rains and the water lays there maybe for a few hours or a day or so, we call them mud puddles. That, that now would, under WOTUS, that would, be, that would be subject to federal permitting and regulation. Technically, um, if you look at rain gutters, uh, by the definition of WOTUS under the Obama-Biden administration, because that water can, if it jams up and it lays in there for a period of time, uh, parts of your house would be subject to permitting by the federal government, and then everything in between. It's also an insult to states' rights. Um, states under the Clean Water Act, and the Clean Water Act was a righteous piece of legislation that has helped to clean up our, our rivers, or waterways um, for decades. I don't see a problem. Uh, WOTUS was a solution in search of a problem. 
Non-navigable waters have always been under the jurisdiction of the states, and the states have done great with that, but WOTUS uh, blew that up as well, uh, to where federal government would take over uh, what is, uh, by law, the, res the, uh, the responsibility for the states. Well, we stopped that, and President Trump put a great alternative, restored certainty uh, for agriculture, farmers, ranchers, foresters, just everyday citizens that own homes and property and acreage. Um, and now the June 8th, this announcement that they're relooking at WOTUS. Now, the Biden administration has always been, uh, um, you know, a, a, little, a little vague on facts. And so we don't know yet uh, uh, on, on exactly what they're going to propose. But if the best predictor of future performance is past performance, I'm concerned that we're going to return to those threats on private property rights that serve no purpose. Uh, you know, I've... One of the things uh, I always challenged the EPA when I, uh, because under WOTUS, I chaired the, the subcommittee in agriculture for conservation, forestry, watersheds, and soils. And so uh, when uh, we would require them to come in and speak to us in the agriculture committee, and I always challenge them, show me where the problem is. Show me, show me exactly where this devastation, this, this incredible challenge that you have that you want to to do this, and they could they could never come up with the details and the facts. It was just it was about control and, and the taking away of of states' rights, and quite frankly, attacking private property rights. It's always good to see you. So much going on. Will you come back and visit with us down the road, Tony? Any time, you bet. I really appreciate the opportunity. I want to thank you for being such a great great voice for agriculture and for rural America. We, we need you and we, we appreciate uh, what you do. Thank you for the kind words. It's the Honorable G.T. Thompson representing the congressional, 15th Congressional District of Pennsylvania Ranking Member, House Ag Committee on today's Agribusiness Report.